Hello and welcome back to What If? Daily Contemplations for Life Transformation. And today we're going straight in with day number two. And today the What If Contemplation is what if you believed in what you couldn't see? Now I love this topic. It's a favorite of mine. So I'm gonna get a little bit passionate about this because this is what changed my life and it can change yours too. So are you ready? Have you ever considered what would happen if you believed in what you couldn't see? Do you recognize that currently what you believe is possible or available to you is based on what you've seen in the past, the conditioning that you've had, and also what's around you right now in terms of your, you know, your current reality, your personal reality, and those, that reality of the people that are closest to you? Have you ever wanted to do something really crazy or out there in terms of what other people are doing? but talk yourself out of it because you didn't know how, and you didn't know how people would react, and you didn't know how you would get there. Well, you're not alone. I witness so many people constantly putting off their dreams because they don't know the how. They don't see how that can happen, and they just see the big gap between where they are and where they wanna go. But what if you believed in what you couldn't see? Allowing yourself to witness something from a different perspective is a simple but hugely powerful process to receive new information. So if you decided right now that you had everything you needed to achieve everything that you ever wanted, what would you do differently? So if you knew that already inside you had everything that you needed to get, achieve, have, attain, learn everything you ever wanted, what would you be doing differently? I can pretty much guarantee that if you put your faith in front of your fear, you would start taking action, any action. You would live by this amazing truth that I recently heard from Michael Bernard Beckwith. And I've been repeating this a lot across my podcast, so excuse me if you've heard it before. But pain pushes until vision pulls. And it's so true. It was something that happened to me. I didn't even realize until reflecting back doing this series was that, I was always chasing something different because the pain of where I was was so uncomfortable. Now, thankfully, I'm completely inspired for my journey. So I'm being pulled by the vision now and there's a very different energy and it feel, it's, it's just so beautiful and you too can have that. Ultimately, your fear of staying the same must be greater than the fear of the effort that lies ahead. Your fear of staying the same must be greater than the, than the, the contemplation of the effort that it's gonna take you to move away and to create something new. I am sure that you have heard of so many instances whereby you know, you've, somebody's hit rock bottom and in that moment, they've had to completely let go, completely surrender. And it is at that almost precise moment that bang, something happens and their life goes on a completely different trajectory. If you've ever watched The Secret, you'll know there's, very, there's a huge number of people in there um, uh, Lisa Nichols, um, Michael Bernard Beckwith, uh, Joe Vitale, uh, there's another one there. They've been homeless, they've been more than beyond broke. One of them was a drug dealer, you know, and there comes that moment in time when you have to dis decide to make it change or not. Oprah has got a really great story about that. So I would urge you, I'm going to put it in the notes, I would urge you to go back and check the blog that goes with this YouTube clip and check out Oprah's um, video on what happened the minute that she let go and surrendered. So moving on from that, what do you do about it? Well, you have to decide what's possible. Let's talk about Roger Bannister. So Roger Bannister was the guy that broke the four minute mile in 1954. In the 1940s, the, the, uh, the record stood at three minute, uh, four minutes, and let me have a look at it here, four minutes and 59.4, no it wasn't, sorry, four minutes and one second. And throughout the whole of the 1940s, nobody could smash it. Nobody could get past that because it wasn't humanly possible until Roger Bannister did it in 1954 in three minutes, 59.4 seconds. 46 days later, somebody else did the same thing. And then month after month after month, other people were doing it, right? Why? Because it suddenly became humanly possible. People had started to see that it was possible. So because they'd seen it, they could see it in their mind's eye that they could do it, they achieved it. But it took Roger Bannister to prime his brain, prime his mind for something that nobody else had done and to break their record in the first place 
to let other people see that it's possible. So you have to decide what's possible and prime your brain, prime your mind, your visualization and your energy around making that happen. So let's talk about faith. My favorite definition of faith is believing without seeing. But unfortunately, we know the most common way that we say is, I'll believe it when I see it. But that's not the universal law. The universal law is, when I believe it, I will see it. As I will talk to you over and over again, your thoughts create your feelings, your emotions, your feelings and emotions create an energy, and the energy is the language of the universe, which is creating this current reality of yours. I recently heard on a podcast, it was something along the lines of, when you totally have faith in your vision, when you believe in your vision, you can be patient because you know it's being received, you know it's coming. But where there is impatience, there is disbelief that it's coming. I absolutely love that. So when you choose to decide what's possible, you can create new pictures in your mind which attract to you that which you desire. So we know what happens is we have a belief system. The belief system creates a picture in our mind. The picture in our mind creates the internal conversation that we have about what's possible and what we're going to do and what we're going to achieve. And that in turn sort of instigates our behavior and our actions. So for those of you that are new to this concept, I get that it might sound a little bit out there, but let me tell you this, living by this law has changed my life. I've gone from being a depressed single, I was a single parent for a couple of years. I was claiming benefits. I was depressed when I got together with my husband, my now husband, we were absolutely broke. We had 50,000 pounds worth of debt. We didn't have anything. And now I'm, this is the second business that I've started. I, I closed down my other one with no concept of how I was going to make this one work in August 2017. And I have made it work and it continues to grow rapidly. And it's amazing. I'm healthier, happier, wealthier, more in love than I've ever been. And it is, it's just a glorious journey when you can believe and remember, go back to day one, when you can choose to trust yourself, trust the journey and trust the outcome. But because I believe in what I cannot see, I can put total trust in what I feel. And this is something that you need to kind of get around. Trust in yourself, trust in yourself. So before we finish, as always, I've got some exercises for you to do. And I've got some questions for you to answer. So are you ready? Where do you know you are holding back in life because of the need to know how? Where do you witness that impact? In your love life? In your career? Are your finances taking a hit? Or perhaps it's your physical health, or maybe it's where you live, or the friendship circle that you're in. So where can you identify in your life that you want to go that step further, but you can't because you need to know the how, and you're scared of not knowing the how, you're scared of not knowing the outcome. So where are you holding yourself back? You can go back to the insight tools that I gave out in my blogs at louisecartwright.com, where you can identify the six major areas of your life. So do go check those out. If you can't find them, please come over to Women Embracing Wealth, reach out to me in my group, and I'll send them to you directly. The next thing I want you to do is to close your eyes and to start to create a movie in your mind. If in this time that you've got your eyes closed, you allowed yourself to totally believe in what you cannot see in reality, what picture would you have in your mind? What would you have? What would you be? What would you be doing that you don't do now, or you don't have now? What would you lose that you don't want anymore? How specifically would your life be different? In this stillness, when you are tapped in and turned on and tuned in, as Abraham Hicks would say, to this vision, this magical vision of your dream life. I want you to imagine there's a switch on the side of your head right now. And I want you to turn it off because now your brain's turned off. You've turned off the conscious mind. You've con turned off the, con the, the thinking. You've turned off the reptilian brain because now we're going to come to the all-knowing, the all-knowing unconscious universal wisdom. And you're going to ask your unconscious mind, if I believed in this vision in my mind, what is my next step? And write down the first thing that comes up, whether it be a word, an emotion, a, a picture, a phrase, anything that comes up, write it down. It could be, it may seem completely irrelevant, but write it down. And then when you sort of come out of that sort of semi-trance, just give yourself some time to journal on that. What else came up? You may have fear conversations. You may suddenly have a click that something's just changed like that or a sudden learning. Because this is what happens when you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. When, and sometimes you can have the most amazing learnings in the most amazing 
spaces when you didn't expect that to come. This is the gift of the right questions and the unconscious mind. So your fourth part is to commit to taking action based on what you just wrote down. The size of the action right now is completely irrelevant if you've never taken anything before. It's the intention of the action that matters. So if you've realized now that you've never consciously created your life, if you realize you've always just gone with the flow and done what other people said you to do and gone by expectation, your body's going to have a reaction to you starting to do new things. Now, some people will, will hold their nose and they will leap off and they will jump out and they will find the way as they move their way across to the next mountain. But for some other ones, it's a little bit more like, um, what do they call that thing? Not the long jump. Um, you know, the one they do, is, you know, the hop, skip and a jump type thing, right? So it's a little bit of a slower process and then bang, they get there because they suddenly feel more competent and competent in what they're achieving, okay? So let me just recap those. The first thing is to find out where you're being held back by your need to know how you're going to get there. What are you not going for? Because you want to know the answer. Number two is to close your mind, close your, your, your eyes and create a picture of your dream life. Like really, your dream life. No holes barred, no thinking, well, that's not going to happen for me. Like go crazy. And then as you play that movie, turn off your conscious mind, turn that switch off, connect in with the universal consciousness and ask yourself, if I totally believed in that, if I totally believed that was possible for me, what would be my next step? And listen. Now, when you practice that kind of unconscious conversation over and over again, it becomes much more clear. And what I want you to be aware of is that you might start to hear things from the TV or the radio or a conversation. You might read something in a book. You might see something and bang, bang, bang. You're going, that's for me. That's for me. That's for me. It happens. It really, really happens. So moving on from yesterday's mantra, you can continue with that mantra. And I'm going to give you another one to add. It may just be this is what you need for today. Your mantra for today's lesson is, I release the need to know how and stay focused on the next step. I release the need to know how and I only stay focused on the next step. And that's what I really want you to consider over the next time, how that feels. Remember how we felt when we trusted ourselves and we felt that freedom within our body? But what happens if we also release the need to know the how and we become inspired by daily action. So I'm gonna leave that one with you and I'll connect in with you again on day three of What If, Daily Contemplations for Life Transformation. Bye for now.